after my chat with Mike Elliott, he decided to go away and do some experiments with his children to further reinforce the concepts that he taught me about aerodynamics in Formula One. So Rachel and Daniel, we've been sent a letter from Mercedes. Shall I read it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh. So it says, Dear Mike, Rachel and Daniel, we have an exciting challenge for you. Your task is to explain how a wing generates lift, or in the case of a Formula One car, downforce. We look forward to watching your explanation video. Yours sincerely, Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, you're for the challenge? Yeah, yeah, definitely. In order for us to be able to explain how lift is generated on a wing, we need some theory first. So we're going to start with an equation, if that's okay. You happy with that? Yes. This is called Bernoulli's equation, and this is an equation that aerodynamicists use a lot. And although it looks quite complicated, it's actually not as complicated as it looks. So we've got a P on this side, so this is P is for pressure, plus a half times rho, which is the density, times u squared, and that's the velocity squared equals a constant. So in air that we're going to be talking about, the density is pretty much constant. So the only two terms which we're really interested in is pressure and velocity. So pressure plus a half times density times velocity squared equals a constant. So if um, velocity goes up, what's going to happen to pressure? It lowers. lowers. Good. It's down. Really good. Okay. Really simple? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, and if um, velocity goes down, what's going to happen to the pressure? It goes up, 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 higher. Brilliant. The other thing we need to look at is the streamlines around an aerofoil. So here we've got this wing that's generating lift, and this is what the flow does, roughly. I'll sketch there, these streamlines. And quite often what happens is people explain lift by thinking about what happens to the flow on the upper surface and what happens to the flow on the lower surface. So what they'll say is, if we start at a point here, where the flow splits, the flow that goes around this upper surface here has to go quite a bit further than any flow that goes around the lower surface this way. You see that? The, the two paths are different lengths? Yeah. So if the flow separates here and it comes back together here, then in order to go that further distance, it has to go faster. And if it's going faster, do you remember what Bernoulli's law told us? What would happen to pressure? It would get lower. It would get lower, that's right. So if we get lower pressure above the wing, then we get um, below it, and therefore we get this sort of net effect of lift. Now the problem with the explanation, which appears lots, is it's not actually correct. The flow that separates, that goes over the upper surface, doesn't necessarily meet the flow that comes over the lower surface. And actually there's been some really good experiments done by a professor at Cambridge called Holger Babinski, and you can find those on YouTube with smoke flow, and it shows that actually the flow going over the upper surface gets to the trailing edge first. So actually this explanation for lift that appears in lots of places isn't right. So I think we need to do some experiments and see if we can work out what's going on for ourselves. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So just really simple, bit of paper for you, Daniel. Thank you. Bit of paper for you, Rachel. Thank you. And one for me. So all we're going to do is, if you hold it by the end like this, so it's bowed over, and then just blow across the top. Okay, so what's happening? Um, the you paper blow. lifts when we blow. Okay. Like, this bit lifts up. Okay, does yours do the same, Rachel? Yeah. Okay, so if we go back to what we learned before about Bernoulli's equation, so some people will explain this and say that because we're blowing over the paper, the velocity is higher, so what's happening to the pressure? It's going down. It's going down. And so you get atmospheric pressure underneath and low pressure on the top and it lifts. But it's actually not the correct explanation. And we can show that. If we hold the paper so it's vertical like this, and if you blow down on it, does it lift now? No, it kind of wobbles. Okay. Right. So what we'll do is, let's do another experiment. So we'll do something that's a, a, a bit of a more sophisticated experiment and see what that shows us. Okay? Yeah. 
Okay guys, so for this next experiment, I've made something for you to use. So we've got a bit of polystyrene look and it's got this curved shape. Ooh, yeah. And it's got a hinge at the top. So if you hold it at the top, it can swing backwards and forwards like this. Okay, so Daniel, if you hold it by the top, the very this top, way or? whichever way you want, it doesn't really matter. Okay, Rachel, I'll give you a hairdryer to use. So what you can do is if you turn that hairdryer and hold it out in front of you, Daniel, a bit, that's it. If you squirt it down, hold it parallel to it. Okay, so that's on that side. Now I'm going to put it on the curved side. Okay, back on the side. On the curved side. Can you explain what happened in the experiment? So, like when we were blowing on the paper, mm. it went up when it was curved, and it's kind of the same here with the curved polystyrene. When the hairdryer blows into it, it goes up. But then when we had the paper flat, and we blowed down it, it didn't go up. And it's the same with the hairdryer and the flat bit of polystyrene. Oh, very good. So actually we need the flow to be curved, don't we, to generate lift? When the flow goes flat along this side, it doesn't do anything. Should we try something that would just be a bit of fun with the same physics and see what happens? Yeah. Okay, so guys, for this experiment, we're going to use a hairdryer up here. So if you hold it like that, Daniel, and turn it on, hold it up, and we've got a ball in. So let's see if we can explain what's happening. So do you remember in the previous experiment when we blew on the curved side, what happened? Oh, it lifted. It lifted, yeah, or it pulled in. So if we blow on the curved side of this, the ball's going to pull in towards the jet. It's coming from the head wire. And if the ball's this side, it's going to pull back into the jet, yeah? So it's always getting pulled back into the jet. That's why it's stable. So why do you think it just hovers there? What forces are acting on the ball? The arrows of steam. resistance and gravity. So you've gravity pulling it down, and then the thrust of this jet creates a yeah. drag on the ball that pulls it up. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay guys, so for our last set of experiments, we're not going to use air, we're just going to use some forces on this steel ball. So, if I roll the ball, can you catch it at the other end, Rachel? If I roll the ball, I roll it back. What's happening to the direction it's going? Does it change direction as I roll it? No, it just goes no, in a straight line. It goes in a straight line. Okay, and what do you think is happening to the speed of the ball? Is it staying the same, or is it speeding up or slowing down? It's just saying the same. Okay. Same. So because the table's flat and the ball's heavy, by Newton's what's called Newton's first law, the velocity of the ball stays the same. There's no forces acting on it, so it just stays at the same velocity. So if I give that ball to you, Rachel, now if I stick a ball over here and put my foot like that. So now the table is tilted this way. So if you try rolling that, Rachel. So what's happening now? It's going up and then coming back down. So it's starting off with a given velocity, and then what's so happening to that velocity? To go so as it goes up, it slows down, yeah. and then it totally stops to then turn around and come back down, and as it come, it's coming back down, it speeds up again. Okay, so the speed and the velocity of the ball is changing, so there must be a force acting on it. So what force do you think is acting on it? Um, gravity. Gravity. It's gravity. The gravity pulling it back down. Okay, good, very good. All right, so now, if I, um, let's move this book to the end, like this. So now the table is tilted towards it. So if you roll the ball again across the table, Rachel. 
Oh, you've rolled it uphill, so it's gone. And what sort of shape path has it gone? It's, it's, a, it's a curve. In a no. curve, okay. So why do you think it's going in a curve path then, Daniel? Is it because when Rachel pushes it up, yeah. the gravity pulls it down, but because the it this is the force is coming this way. Yeah. It follows the force and comes back down. That's right. So the force acting this way because there's a proportion of gravity that's acting down this hill, and then that moves it to, to roll down towards the bottom of the hill. That's all we need to know. So now we go back to the computer and we can see if we can put all these experiments together and explain what's happened. So in the first experiments we did, we had the paper that we blew over and we had the curved shape that made a polystyrene we blew over. Can you remember what happened with those experiments, Daniel? Um, when we were blowing over a curve, yeah. the object would, well, in this case, polystyrene and paper would lift. Yeah. And then when we blew onto a flat side, it yeah. would just stay the same. Okay. So even though we were blowing faster on the flat side, and you'd think by Bernoulli's equation it would drop the pressure, it didn't, did it? It didn't work. It only worked when we blew over the curved side. So let's see if we can explain that. So this is the equation we had before for Bernoulli's, wasn't it? That P plus a half rho u squared equals a constant. Remember that? Yeah. And we said that if the velocity goes up, the pressure comes down. And if the velocity goes down, the pressure goes up. Yeah? So, that's a very simple version of the equation. I'm going to show you a slightly more complicated one with an extra term. Does any of this look familiar to you? Do any of these terms look like terms you might have seen somewhere else? You look at them. Is that the... So if I look at this one, for instance, half rho u squared. So if I times rho by volume, that would give me mass. So I'd have a half times mass times u squared. So that'd be kinetic energy. Okay, so that's kinetic energy. So if I times this density by volume, so I'd have mgh. That's gravitational potential energy. So that's potential energy. Now we didn't put this term in before because we didn't really need it because we didn't have very many height changes. So if we've got pressure times by volume, do you think that might be another energy? Yeah. So that's the potential energy due to pressure. So we've got an energy here, an energy here, and an energy here. So what must this constant be? Energy. Another energy. That's right, Daniel. Very good. When we lower your mouth or you blow the hairdryer, do you think we're adding energy? Or do you think it's staying the same? When we blow the hairdryer, it's adding energy. And when we blow with our mouths. So actually, Bernoulli's equation only works if the amount of energy is constant. We're just trading from one thing to another. So when we blew with the hairdryer, this constant was going up. So although the velocity was going up, the constant was going up as well, and the pressure was staying roughly the same. So when it was only flat, it didn't give us any, any lift. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We then looked at a ball, didn't we? And we had a ball, and it had this curved path that was going around. What has to happen to this ball? The surface it's on, it needs to be on a tilt, so yeah. the gravity can... So in the case of the ball, the gravity was pulling it. Which way was the force acting from gravity? So if imagine we were looking down on the table, which way is the force acting? That way. Down. So it's acting down. So, like that? Yeah. Okay. So this is the ball rolling, and it has a force coming this way, and that makes it go in a curve. Now, if this wasn't a ball, if this was just a bit of air going along a curved streamline, in order for that air to go on a curved streamline, what do you think has got to happen? Be a force. That's right, Daniel. There has to be a force. And what sort of force do you think would happen in air? Do you remember Bernoulli's equation? If we go back to Bernoulli's equation, oh, pressure. Pressure. That's right. What we could have is we could have a pressure gradient. So this is pressure on this axis, and this is the distance through the ball. We could have higher pressure this side and lower pressure this side, and that gives us a force. That makes sense. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Happy. Now, if we look at our streamlines that we drew earlier, you see how the streamline's curved? Yeah. yeah. So, if we've got atmospheric pressure up here, and that streamline's curved, what's the pressure got to be here? Higher or lower than atmospheric? If it's curved this way? Lower. Lower. So that pressure there is lower than that pressure. 
Now this have got this streamlines curve, so is the pressure lower again or higher? Lower. That's curved again, is it lower again? Lower. Lower again, lower again, lower again, all the way down to here, yeah? So what can we say about the pressure here on the upper surface? I've written it there. It's low. It's much lower than atmospheric, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so now if you look from the bottom, and it's atmospheric pressure here, and the streamline's curving this way, what can we say about the pressure of this side of the streamline? It's higher. Higher. And what about this here then? From Even here to here? Higher. Here to here? Even higher. It's now getting quite flat, so it's probably not changing very much, is it? No. So what we can say here is the pressure on the lower surface is more than atmospheric. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if the pressure on the upper surface is a lot less than atmospheric and the pressure on the lower surface is more, what's going to happen? What's the force on the air going to be? So the low, low pressure on the top, high pressure on the bottom, what's it going to do? Go up. It'll move up. So we end up with lift. Okay. So that's where the lift comes from. So that's how it works. Do you remember what question Mercedes asked us? Can you explain how wind generates lift? Okay. So Rachel, do you think we've explained that? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Did you explain it? Have yeah. fun? Yeah. What was the most fun bit? Um, I sure quite like doing the equations at the end. Oh dear, that's quite sad. <laughs> there you go. What was your best bit? <laughs> I'm going to like this again. Um, it's definitely seeing the flying polystyrene ball. Excellent. So we had fun and we explained what lift is and how it works. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay well done. Like Thank it. you very much.